we flew from Oliver Tambo to Dubai, spent a few hours there and then flew on to Muscat. Muscat is the capital of Oman and lies on the Arabian Sea. David met us at the airport and then took us to see the Sultan's yacht and one of the Sultan's palaces. And then we went to the local yacht club for lunch. Up on the hill was the British Embassy. The next morning, Sunday, is a work day in Oman and so Michael and I took the opportunity to wander around a bit. What we didn't appreciate was just how hot Muscat gets. This little shopping complex was about one kilometer from the flat. Then we had to make our way back in temperatures above 40 degrees centigrade. Ish. The next day, David took us to a new marina development in Muscat. The Amaret Pass. Well, that's the area there is as for where. That's the river we were driving last night. It's the big pass, the white pass. That's the big the pass. highway oh, development in Muscat is absolutely yeah. amazing. At night, they are all lit up, even in the bush. In the evening, we went to the Muscat Opera House to see Puccini's Turandot. The Opera House is a marvel to behold. What an absolutely magnificent performance. It was an imported company from Italy. This was David's first opera, and hopefully the first of many more. The next morning, David took us to the Grand Mosque. These buildings are quite magnificent, all in beautiful marble. The gardens are attractive, there are water features. It is just a joy to behold. Inside the mosque, there appears to be just acres and acres of carpet. The Holy Koran. And then, of course, put your shoes back on and back into town. This is the state legislature in Muscat. In the evening, we visited the Sukh, which is a local market, and I bought myself a dish dash. The next morning, we started our desert adventure, and the first stop we made was at Nizwa. The inland road infrastructure is quite incredible. These are the gates arriving at Nizwa. In Nizwa we visited the Sukh. Remember, that's the market. There's the fish market. This is the factory for making the Omani sweet. Our trusty guide, Muhammad. Halfa. There are also vegetable and meat markets and outside a number of other different kinds of markets. Frankincense is big as are herbs and spices. This is the Nisba Fort. Unfortunately, it was closed this day, so we weren't able to visit it. Maybe another time. It says banana pool. Banana pool, yes. Or Bilkit Al Moz. Bilkit Al Moz. In English, it's banana pool. The source of the water at banana pools, or Bilkit Al Moz, comes from the mountains. Farms. So, would you like to walk from here to another? Okay, yeah. Birkit Al Moz is an abandoned village with some structures still in good condition. This is a way to see the real Omani lifestyle. In the background, you can hear the devoted be called to prayer.
Then we were on our way again through a very large date plantation. And then we made our way to the beehive tombs. Beehive tombs at Nizwa. The beehive tombs form one of the largest proto-historic necropolises in the world. They are thought to be funeral chambers, but no burial remains have ever been retrieved from these so-called tombs. We stopped at the tyre shop to get the tyres pressure reduced a bit before we move into the desert. <laughs> Got to get Mohammed in there too. <laughs> Media town and the sand, desert called Wahiba sand. And then the desert just started. <laughs> Mohammed took us on some dune surfing which was to say the least a little scary especially when you're going sideways down the dunes but I guess he knew what he was doing. I think this is good for health. Do you think that, Doctor? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. We then visited a Bedouin camp and met the owners, who were all dressed up in their full regalia. Here we had coffee and halfa. Is his name Hamad? Hamad. 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 And finally, we arrived at the Wahara 1000 Nights Camp, just before dusk. It certainly has been a long and exciting day. Sunset in the desert is very special. The only problem is it all happens so quickly. Then it was time for dinner, with a little bit of background music. Sunrise is a little like sunset in reverse. It was also fairly quick to happen. The Sultan was responsible for reintroducing the desert oryx back into Oman. Our accommodation was very comfortable and we had this open to the sky shower. It was lovely. After breakfast, we hit the road again. Mohammed just loved having his picture taken. Spectacular views. Camels are used for their meat and they're also used in racing. But racing camels are really pampered in a big way. And they don't walk to town any longer, they drive. Then we got our tyres pumped up again and we were soon on our way to Wadi Bani Khalid which is an oasis in the middle of the desert. One of the special features of Wadi Bani Khalid is the little fish called Dr. Fish who eat all the dead skin off your feet. It's amazing, eh? 
Apparently, women pay a fortune for this treatment in the capitals of Europe. Wadi Bani Khalid is approximately 200 kilometers from Muscat. It is one of the best known wadis in the area and its stream maintains a constant flow of water throughout the year. As a geographical area, Wadi Bani Khalid covers a large swathe of lowland and mountains. We then made our way to Sur. Sur is known for its dow building industry. The dows built here are made from teak. And then it was lunch on the promenade and our next stop was Vit Sant. This is a deep natural depression filled with water and called Hawiyat Najim. The locals say that a meteor fell on the spot of land resulting in the natural depression and forming a small lake. And then we hit the road again and made our way back to Muscat. Kirsten had returned from her studies in London, so it was nice to be all together for the last few days of our stay in Muscat. We are in Sifa. That evening we went to a rather fancy hotel for a couple of drinks and then off for dinner. And so our stay in Muscat, Oman came to an end. And we say thank you to our hosts, David and Kirsten, for making our stay in Oman a truly memorable one.